So in today's video, I'm going to be simplifying solidly forks. Now, it's a new style of a decentralized exchange that's gaining a lot of traction and popularity, but I found it to be very confusing. I didn't know what was rebasing. I didn't know what it was the little VE letters in front and how to lock, vote for different pools, as well as the weekly emissions and the financial NFTs that come from locking your token. But if that seems confusing, don't worry, I'm gonna break that all down for you in this video. I'll be taking a look at FINA, but it doesn't matter necessarily which project I'm looking at, as long as you understand the basic concepts. Now keep in mind that each project can have its own little twist, tweak, and new features. Uh, but before we get started, I gotta let you know, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This is just for educational purposes only. Also, I am not being paid nor sponsored to make this video. So with that out of the way, let's get started. So we're going to be going over a simplified thread that I posted out here on Twitter. Uh, one of the main things we'll be looking at is this diagram that helps really show what's happening here. But before we get into that, I want to just head over to the website so you have just a very basic idea as to how this DEX looks like and some of these terms that we're going to be talking about. Yes, they got the cool animations, can scroll down for extra metrics, but that's not important. You can click right here on the swap button, and this is where you would, guess what, swap your tokens. The liquidity tab, this is where you would provide liquidity for certain token pairs, and you get rewarded in the DEX token shown right here with the APR. Clicking on the lock section, this is where you take your DEX token and we're going to be locking it and then you get an NFT. With that NFT, you can come over here, vote for certain pools, and this will help determine the rewards that we'll get for farmers when they provide liquidity. The rewards is, hey, after once you voted, maybe there's some bribes, some fees, then you're able to come here and collect it. Gauges section is probably more for projects that are looking to um, create gauges or add a bribe. And we're going to breeze over this tab right here. Don't worry about it. I don't want to add confusion with the fee NFT. So now that we have a basic idea of how the website looks, we can now dive in into this thread. So the first question is what problems are they solving? So with solidly forks, they're looking to have the liquidity be more efficient. So if you take a look at other DEXs, maybe they're not as efficient. Hopefully with the solidly force, it can be. And also it provides an ability for newer crypto projects or just crypto projects in general, a cheaper way to have deeper liquidity. If that goes over your head, don't worry about it. We're gonna continue on here and just really talk about uh, the tokens themselves and how it gets locked, et cetera. So let's pull up this diagram here. So step one is to take a look at the basic DEX token, which is fee. Now it's tempting to take a look at those three letters, T, H, E, and say, oh, that's the. But the way how it's pronounced is the, and we're going to carry that out through the rest of the video. So with the, you can think of it as, let's say your Uniswap token with Uni. So it's just basic token, simple enough. So you can buy it, you can sell it, and you can also farm it. Now, when you lock it, you're going to receive an NFT. And that is going to be called V fee. The V stands for vested, the E is for escrow. Not important, don't worry about it. Just when you see the VE, two lowercase values, just think, oh, that means locked. So it's, the tokens are locked for however long you specify. Typically people put it in for two years and they keep on renewing that lock. But it's just your fee tokens that are locked up and you got an NFT out of it. So why do the whole NFT to begin with? Great question. Well, it allows you to then be able to buy and sell it on let's say OpenSea, as well as do some merging, some splitting and some transferring. So it provides a lot of different abilities here, which is pretty cool. So what's the purpose of having this locked NFT to begin with? Well, it allows you to then vote on pools. So when you vote on the pools, that dictates how much of the basic DEX token is going to be emitted, meaning how, which pools are going to have the highest rewards for the farmers over here. And by voting, you have the ability to decide. 
However, one key thing to note is that you're not getting the emissions from that. The farmers are. So if the farmers go into, let's say, uh, BUSD and BNB pools, the farmers are the ones that are going to be getting those tokens. So naturally, the question is like, well, what's the point of getting the locked NFT and voting? The answer is voters get bribes and swap fees from the pools that they voted on. So let me say that again. If you have your lock tokens and you vote for a particular pool, you then have the ability to collect the bribes and the swap fees that happen on that pool for that week. So if a project is coming in, they don't have a lot of liquidity. They're like, uh, nobody knows about my token. Uh, this is kind of rough. Well, guess what? They can put up a bribe, meaning they, they put up some extra rewards and that makes it so that people who have these locked tokens are more likely to vote on those pools, get higher emissions, more rewards, which means deeper liquidity. With me so far? Cool. If not, don't worry about it. Just as long as you get the basic concept here. So the next important aspect is to take a look at the weekly emissions. Now, the emissions, they're quite high, especially at the beginning. And the emissions is actually the fee token, right? It's the basic DEX token. And 67% of that, 67.5% is going to the farmers. So when they're providing liquidity in the pools, hey, hey, they're getting the rewards. 2.5% goes to the team and 30% goes as rebase rewards to the people that locked up their fee tokens. So what's this whole rebase concept, right? The 30% goes to the locked voters. Well, let's take a look. So there's the concept of dilution. So with so many tokens getting emitted each week, if you took the plunge and you locked up your token, right? You, and there's so many new tokens continually coming out, it's like, well, you're getting a less slice of the pie. So in this example right here, can, and these are just rough numbers, right? You locked up 100 tokens and currently on the market there was 1,000. Okay, well, let's go to next week. It could happen where you have still your 100 locked up, but all of a sudden on the market there's 10,000. So the portion that you own is much less than the week prior. So to help combat that, this is where the whole rebase comes in, where if you have some of your tokens locked, hey, hey, you get 30% of those weekly emissions for free. So a lot of these points we already covered here in this thread. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to go over the details and take a look for yourself. Here's a quick screenshot from the documentation showing uh, how every single week the emissions decreases by 1%. So as mentioned, VFI, the lock token of fee, is an NFT. It can actually be merged together. So if you have multiple of these NFTs, you can just literally merge them together into one, which makes it much nicer for voting and keeping track of everything. You can split it because perhaps the NFT is just so big and you just want to break it up. And then you can head over to OpenSea where you can buy and sell it. Now, you can see in the background, it's black and the text is white and there's not a lot of detail. The details are very confusing, so I did leave a link to the website that helps provide a lot better details and makes that easier to read. Now, scrolling down, there's a little bit more metrics here, more about the tokenomics and the partnerships, collaborations, as well as perhaps a little bit of alpha. So if you're looking for additional resources regarding Solidly Forks and also about Thena, I'm going to be leaving a lot of links in the description. So you'll find the Thena documentation there. I also suggest following Crypto Lynn. She has a lot of good, perhaps Thena Alpha upcoming. She does drop down information about Thena in general. Definitely make sure to check out Blockbytes with his detailed videos explaining Thena, as well as this thread by Small Cap a scientist. He does a deep dive into Thena as well. So let's just do a quick recap here, taking a look at the website with all this information that we have. So Thena, decentralized exchange, they're looking to be a little bit more efficient. When I come over here, I can do my normal swap like I would on a normal decentralized exchange. When I do it from BNB to Thena, there's going to be a small amount that's taken as a swap fee. So anybody that had their locked fee, which is the V fee, and they voted for this specific pool, the BNB and Thee pool, they're going to collect those swap fees, and that's their reward. 
the farmers are the ones that are getting this APR, these fee emissions. So by providing liquidity here, they're getting 191% APR in fee tokens at the time of recording this video. So the farmers are collecting that reward for providing liquidity. When it comes to locking, you come over here to the lock window, create a lock, you have your fee tokens, put up however much you want for however long, boom, done. And then I don't have one currently on hand, but in general, you can merge and split that as well. When you have your DeFi NFT, you can select between potentially all the different ones that you have or one, and you can come over here and vote. So there's gonna be the rewards, the bribes, etc. So you can sort by rewards, and this is where, let's say, different crypto projects can put up bribes, and you can see that, you can do the math, whether the APR, the votes, everything is worth it. Um, but again, I'm not going into that because this is just a general overview, simplification. But once that's all done, you can then collect the rewards at a certain time once the epoch is over and it happens every week gauges again probably more for crypto projects to create a gauge or a bribe and we're not going to go over the fee nft uh, definitely take a look at the analytics documentation if you want to know more so that does it for today's simplification video hopefully that helped out if you want to help me out please give me a like subscribe and if you want to see these simplified threads before the video, before everybody else, make sure to follow me on Twitter. I'll see you guys in the next video.